please uh, give your warmest applause to Norma Winarski and uh, yeah, let's welcome you on stage. Norman? Thank you, so much. Thank you so much. I love groups like this. This is where energy comes from. So all of you have to be, be very positive, very thoughtful about questions and very hard, okay? Ask hard questions and, 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 and tell me what you enjoy and what you'd really like to hear about. So let's, um, let's talk about AI. First of all, before I even begin, there, AI has definitely been in a hype um, cycle in the last 50, 60 years. And I've gone through many of those cycles, you know, where it's, first of all, people make promises, then it gets very, um, very much hyped. And then there's a dash, and then there's reality, and then there's growth again. Just to answer the question, I don't think there's that much hype in this cycle. Um, I think that there is real depth in what's happening, and we can even explain some of that depth. I, I don't want to make too much noise on the mic here. We can explain some of that depth today. So my background, as you uh, might know, I didn't bring this and put this on the deck, but my background was the head of ventures at SRI. I was the president of SRI Ventures. My job was to create, there's too much noise. Is that better? My job was to create um, ventures or licenses from SRI Technology, Stanford Research Institute Technology. There were 2,500 people there. Um, there was about half a billion dollars of research a year, and we chose three or four ventures to create breakthrough ventures each year. Over that period of time, we created about $25 billion of, of market value, created companies like Nuance, uh, uh, Intuitive Surgical, which is a robotic surgery company, and many others. So what's the formula? How do you, how do, you do this? And, and I was asked to particularly focus on AI, and it is my love. I was a PhD in math and um, uh, for many years was a mathematician before I worked on ventures and I'm better off over here. So, um, okay. So you almost certainly use in a, in a, this is the only advertising chart, I promise. So. Uh, you almost certainly use an innovation every day from where we were. Computer mouse was actually in invented at uh, Stanford Research Institute. It then went on to Xerox Park and then went on to Apple, as you know. That, that little, I'm not going to do each of these. That little um, napkin on the right-hand side over here, that was the internet. Um, that was the full design of the internet on the napkin. And the one in red was SRI receiving bits. Typical of all initial applications. Uh, the words came from UCLA, log in. It failed after log. But that was the great beginning of the internet. Uh, robotic surgery. Um, uh, we got, actually, the, one of the most important parts of, of what we've done in the past in terms of uh, technology was compression technology, which is a basis for much AI. And we did, we led the Grand Alliance, we led the creation of HDTV in the United States and got an Emmy for that. <clears throat> okay, I think you, you should really know how Siri came about because, because by knowing how Siri came about, you'll know that, um, first of all, it was not what you probably thought. We did not do deep research in speech and natural language. Yes, we did do deep research, but we didn't start that company because we had done that research. We have a principle that we never start companies unless there's a market problem that's deep and compelling. And so we went and tr had, um, and, I mean, and I'm, everybody who's familiar with Siri, raise your hand. Okay, so I don't have to go through it. But you have a natural language query that would allow you to access web services uh, such as all of these services. And so why did we do that? Why did we create a venture that could, could do this kind of send my wife some flowers and give you an answer to send the flowers? The original reason 
was the economics of click reduction. There was so many clicks to get to buy some flowers, make a ticket, and so on, that one day there was an inspiration that what you really wanted to do was not be a search engine to find out how to do it. You didn't want to go enter information. You wanted something to do for you. You wanted a virtual assistant. And that would give you the access to the information, understand what you were asking, and give you an answer. And that was the beginning. It is not speech by speech recognition, word by word recognition alone, was never considered to be anything more than a commodity when we created Siri. The basis of what we created was to understand the intent of these sentences, recognize the intent, analyze which web services were needed, reason about the web services, combine the entities into the slots of the web service, reason about the answer, and provide the answer. That was the first time that we had demonstrated true AI in the hands uh, of millions of people. So, um, well, before we go to, to this statement, this became a great application. When we launched Siri, people understood immediately, in particular Steve Jobs, two weeks later making that phone call that uh, began his purchase of Siri. And what would really understood was that this was a deep need and a deep desire for people to have access to a virtual assistant that could give you information and save you time and save you energy and surprise and delight you. That was the basis of Siri. Now, when Steve Jobs bought Siri, um, did, I, did you folks hear that story of how that went, happened? OK. Well, one of the problems about how it happened was we had launched the product literally 18, 24, somewhere around 18 to 20 months after we had started the company, 2007. And uh, actually, January 2008, we started it. We launched the product in February of 2010. And then we get this phone call from a person that was, uh, you know, uh, we didn't know who, but the, the CEO of the company gets a phone call. And he says, hi, I'm Steve. And the CEO is a guy named Doug Kitless, uh, who came from Motorola, well-educated. And he said, Steve who? And he said, Steve Jobs. And Doug said, right. And he, and, and he hung up. I, so um, he calls back again, and he says, no, really, I'm Steve Jobs. And uh, I'll prove it to you. I'm inviting you over to my house tonight. And the team, um, the team came over. And then we talked over weeks. And over 20 or 30 times, Steve called until finally he made an offer that, um, that was really beneficial to, and, and uh, delightful to everybody. But what, the reason I'm telling you this story is that we didn't do everything we wanted to do. He bought the company when we had the beginning of a roadmap that we were going to execute on. And so I'm telling you what that roadmap is, OK? And it's you know, obviously we don't have much time today, so, and we're going to do other ventures and talk about that. But the basic principle that's yet to happen is that the future of uh, of the of a search or a, a conversation uh, this, of a search or an engine that works for you, an assistant, is a conversation. It's actually silly to think that you can ask every question you want and get an answer, and that's the end of it. But most virtual assistants work that way. They work with a question and an answer. But we always believed that the, that the approach was going to be a conversation. And so um, the future applications of the virtual assistant that have yet to happen, you know, search and discover for me, learn for me, uh, assist and analyze for me, these are all many, many applications. Save me time and money, surprise and delight me, and know me. These are going to be the future. Right now, uh, uh, natural language applications do not know me. Almost every time they've forgotten whatever I've asked before. They don't know my preferences. They don't learn. And they don't engage in conversations. Okay, So there's a whole um, 
an amazing amount of work yet to be done, and you folks are the kind of teams that can do this. Why do I say that? Because part of it is to understand the market problem that you're analyzing so well and to create a solution that matches it so well that you will be able to create breakthrough solutions. Um, Mary Meeker, she's a venture capitalist at Klein and Perkins, a friend. She publishes, by the way, every six months or so, sort of the future breakthrough technologies and businesses. You should take a look at that. Mary Meeker, Kleiner Perkins. But, you know, you're going to talk to brands and businesses. People are going to interact in a way that they have not before using natural language and vision. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I've seen ventures. I'm part of a venture capital firm right now. And I've seen several ventures now where brands no longer will use something like a QR code to interact with you, but instead they'll speak with you. You know, literally the brand, you know, I'm interested in getting whatever, this kind of hat, the brand will respond and you'll go back and forth. So that's the nature of what will happen. Also in the Valley, Silicon Valley, 2016 is considered effectively the year of AI assistance in chatbots. It was an amazing year in 2016. We had Slack starting to build bots and Alexa, which is really an amazing, I mean, Alexa, you know, in the home has really had great traction in the United States. Alexa asking questions, buying things, e-commerce, e Amazon has done a great job of that. Skype and, and others, Skype bots, all these bots were created and are continuing. And in fact, if you look at this uh, landscape that you can look up by VB Profiles, there, the bot landscape is incredible. There are bot, I don't want to go through all this because we don't have much time, but everybody can get this. There are bots with great traction right now personal assistants, virtual agents, communications agents. And, and of course, there's also new tools now for bot discovery, AI tools for machine learning, bot developer frameworks, usually open source frameworks, for example. There's also been new algorithm research in deep learning and um, many other uh, statistical and semantic ways to do AI. And this has taken off. The good news is this is reality. This, these things are working. Some, most of them, by the way, many of them anyhow, are actually pretty poor. They're pretty dumb bots. Most people are not happy with the performance of these bots. But that's like a child starting to learn. This is not going to go away. People are realizing that effectively assisting people in messaging with smart systems that can answer questions and, and virtual assistants that can give you a broader view of interaction is going to happen. So the good news is it's going to happen. The bad news is there's a lot of competition out there, right? So that can be both exhilarating and it can also be uh, disappointing. You know, what am I going to do if the whole world of, you know, thousands of researchers alone in the Bay Area, maybe hundreds, any, yeah, thousands, and, and around the world are working on this. The clue to this is nobody can do AI in general. They don't have context. They don't have learning. They don't have, you know, the ability to, AI will not solve a broad and general problem. When I created Siri, and I was one of four founders, not the only founder, when I created Siri, we had every understanding that there was ambiguity of the language, incomplete information in the language, uh, 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 conflicting language, missing information. All of that we understood. And so what we did is start market verticals. Travel and entertainment was actually the first few market verticals. And then what happened is when Siri got launched, and after Apple took Siri uh, in 2011, Steve Jobs launches it, makes a big play and, use, and changes the apps. All those apps I talked about, most of them were taken away by Apple. And instead, he connected to calendar, uh, contacts, and things, address book, things of that nature. What happened was, though, it got so fun and so such a phenomenon. And by the way, you want to make that happen with your ventures. 
You want it to be a phenomenon. You want it to be a surprise and delight experience. And if you can do that, you will create the breakthrough. It's not going to be who's better in making the technology algorithm. Most of these algorithms, by the way, even deep learning with neural nets are 20 or 30 years old. What's happening is there's an, uh, a, a colliding exponential that's happening with AI, more data, which enables AI, great algorithms, better uh, processing power, better storage, cloud services, all of that are happening at once. Those are your resources. You can change the world. You really can. If you pick the right market pain point, the problem, and you have your great technology solution for that market. Now, we'll go a little bit further. I know I'm slowing down here. So I st afterwards, we got really frustrated that um, Siri, uh, we had a vision beyond Siri, right? So they bought Siri, and we wanted to do more. Actually, a friend of mine, the friends of mine that were founders, Adam uh, Shire and, and Doc Kitless, formed Viv Labs, which was just recently bought by Samsung, because they also had vision well beyond what was done originally with Apple. Casisto was a company I was helped found. It was started. It's a mobile banking venture. Why did we do that? We started Casisto because um, there was a huge pain point again. Always think about pain point, market pain, okay? That's how you'll find the technology solution you want. So right now, uh, we don't have much time to talk about it, but the desktop for accessing mobile, serv mobile services, sorry, desktop services from banking is a great medium for doing, you know, check transfers, searching everything, doing your, getting your bank account balance, all of those things. Mobile, we actually looked at, in terms of feature ri richness, was about 17 features and very hard to use. So deposit checks, get my balance, a few other things like that. So our vision was to create a conversational virtual assistant and chatbot, by the way, it's called Kai, that will enable you to get the rich features. And you know what that's worth? That's a usability gap between mobile and desktop that's worth about $2 billion a year just in the United States alone. So great market problem, great need for a technology solution to do conversational AI. And this is the kind of AI that we were doing. You know, send $125 to Brian. But guess what? If you're doing this kind of conversational flow, you have all kinds of problems. You have ambiguity, you have incomplete information, you have people asking for things. In this case, somebody asked for sending 125, but there's only $54.78 in the checking account. So you have to use your technology to manage the ambiguity of the user experience, as well as the information associated to that. And that's what made Casisto a venture that I wanted to start. And so we did, and it's now based in New York, and they're, they're, they've got a lot of traction. Traction is a Silicon Valley word of customer take up, you know? So these all kind of conversations happen. All right, now I'm going to give you another one. And in, in, I was asked by the team here, talk about AI in more general. What am I doing? What are the ventures I'm starting? The second one, uh, or third one by now, Siri, and the second one was Casisto. The third one is computer vision. Computer vision concepts are about, and, in, and computer vision analysis, I have to say, is in my mind, and again, I saw the uh, magnificent research at Stanford Research Institute. In my mind, um, computer vision analysis is going to be where Siri was eight years ago. This is going to be a breakthrough. You guys and gals, if you're in this space, take, take note of computer vision. Um, we, so, we tried to solve a problem, and this, we didn't start the venture before I left. I'm sure it's starting. I can't tell you much. So I'm sure it'll be starting soon. But anyhow, um, when you put information like video on a card and you get uh, information like what's in the image or what's in a video, that's locked up. It's really a pain. I just got a card today from our trip. And, and analyzing and organizing that information is, is really hard. That's going to be a pain point for the future. Um, the applications of computer vision in this area are amazing. 
So search for objects. Everybody's read about uh, deep learning, for example. Have you all read about deep learning? You know what the neural, yes? Okay. Neural nets, you know, it could be millions of nodes, layers. It's 20, 30 years old, but now there's new algorithms, new data, all of that that enables that to happen. I've seen now the ability for images to, for people to start recognizing images. Amazing. Can you imagine how powerful that is? If you, when that gets to be efficient, you know, you won't have to write text into search bars in Google or others. You can just place an image in there and find the related images of the same type. Or, as you know, it's already available in some of these applications. Ask for, you know, find my pictures with this person in it or this object in it. That's already starting to happen. And it doesn't just have to be in the big companies like Apple and Google. It could be everywhere. Scenes. People are now going to start recognizing scenes. Give me the scene of when we were in the woods. Give me the scene of, you know, the Alps or whatever. So videos are now going to be capable of being sorted through. And actions, you're now going to have people recognizing actions. Find that person bowing. Find that dog barking, things of that nature. These are all the next generation computer vision AI applications that you'll be seeing. <clears throat> OK, so I'm trying to end now because I know we have uh, two other speakers that are fabulous, and uh, I just thought I'd give you a two to five year prediction. It's too many times people give you predictions, 10, 20 years. It's, you know, by that time, uh, we don't know what we're going to um, see because internet years are like dog years. Every internet year is like seven years or something like that. I mean, in, when you get to two or three, it's as much as you can get. First of all, answers the question we talked about earlier, AI is here. Um, a virtual assistant, a chatbot, is going to be having a profound impact in all industries, um, and as well as computer vision and machine learning. You know, data's the basis for this. The algorithms aren't really that much new, although I'm sure a lot of you would argue that you have new ones. God bless. That's a great thing to do. It's just, if somebody gave me a choice today, uh, would I rather have IBM Watson or the data? I have no doubt I'd choose the data because that's the gold. In fact, you know what, 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 what oil is to the Middle East? Data is to AI, okay? So that's going to be the future. Um, it's the gold rush. Successful ventures, so how do you compete? Successful ventures with natural language understanding, I believe, will be related to vertical and mar markets and applications where, diffi where it's difficult to, to get other ways. These big giants like Google and Apple and, every, and, Google and, and others, uh, Amazon, are not going to be able to collect data that relates to you and your bank account. That's one reason I talked to, about Casisto. They're not going to be able to do the doctor's dialogue with the patient. That's private, confidential information. But if you're working with a hospital, you'll be able to get that. They would never do such a thing, um, and so on. So the, the virtual personal assistant or the chatbot becomes specialized into market verticals. And once you specialize, you'll have your breakthrough opportunity. Uh, computer vision, as I said, is becoming mature. Siri was eight years ago. Autonomous vehicles, drones, and robotics, it's all happening now. And in fact, you're about to see a next great revolution in robotics. Robotics used to be and still is mostly in making cars and things like that. They're in cages to not to hurt people. Robots are going to be in your home in the next two years. They're going to start, they already are with the um, um, vacuuming and the like. But I mean much more. They're going to help you, assist you, uh, you know, pick up the newspaper, you know, make phone calls for you, whatever. And a lot of that has to do with both natural language and computer vision, the ability to navigate and so on. And then machine learning will continue to provide impact in all areas. My own focus, I find it absolutely remarkable, but my focus is health and, and biotech. I, I think that revolution in health and biotech is 
remarkable. We now have, you know, sequencing genes at uh, uh, at $1,000 instead of a billion dollars. And that's going to continue down to hundreds of dollars. And what that does is give you big data associated to people's illnesses, disease. And my own hope is to work with ventures. I'm at the stage of life where what I want to do and why I'm here in Bulgaria, as well as in Silicon Valley and around the world, I want to do the next great breakthrough and say that I helped people do it. Not that I did it, but I was somehow able to help you. And lastly, I'll end with a quote that uh, I often use, but I think it's important for you to know. It's a quote from Margaret Mead. And she said, never doubt that a small group of committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever does. Thank you so much. Siri, hold my beer. <laughs> um, thanks so much for that. That was amazing. Um, for the Q&A part now, um, oh, by the way, I'm Sal. I'm from Source. Um, my job tonight is to make sure that you guys learn uh, the most relevant and actionable things you can out of, out of the evening. Um, so for the, the Q&A, I thought we would do something similar to last time, where if you have a question, um, rather than check out the question and just have an answer, uh, as, as Norman pointed out, conversations are better. So join us on stage for a conversation. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just move a few chairs up here. Um, actually, could I get a hand? Um, thanks. So I'll just well, get four chairs in an arc. So the rules of this open interview format are really simple. Anybody is allowed to ask a question and join the conversation. If you do, you must sit on one of the chairs on stage. Um, if all of the chairs are full, somebody must volunteer their spot and come sit back down. So everybody, anybody up here can speak. Everybody here must remain silent, but you can always come up. Um, does that work for you guys? We can start to dig in. Oh, great. Um, so does anybody want to begin? All right, come on down. My question is, uh, what are the modern, the, actually I have two questions. First of all, what researches are now made that to progress, uh, I mean, which are the most uh, interesting researches that are being made right now? And my s second question is, uh, what are some undeveloped uh, market niches, I mean like, there are certain, I don't know how to say this in English, uh, opportunities, opportunities I mean, in the market that aren't being explored right now. So the first question was um, research. Where is the hot research areas? Or yes. I mean, okay. uh, not exactly hot research areas, but like uh, which groups uh, have the, m the most interesting research right now. In I'm terms of location, you mean? or uh, in a, Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, most interesting, obviously, I, I, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but deep learning with the neural nets has become a major research area. Uh, I'm sure it's done around the world, and in particular uh, in the United States, MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, places like that. Um, computer vision is more difficult, and we're seeing it... Uh, the kind of research, computer vision is not just deep learning alone. There's semantic and, uh, and uh, neural net type of learning. And I'd say that in those areas, those kind of research areas, that and machine, and machine learning in terms of massive amounts of data, you'll see a lot of that research going on at Google and, and, the, and the like. So how to maximize um, NVIDIA is a good example with new, uh, new chips that are going to enable people to do much more fast processing. So what's rapidly happening is we're commodifying what's going on in um, many of these algorithms and now the market problems are going to be the most critical. Is that, what, is that answering your question? Yeah. The first one, yeah. Yeah. So the second one is what are market verticals that you think would have great need? Yes. Okay, so for example, there's a talk by Vinod Kosla, a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, 
that I like very much, where he basically he made a he wrote a talk and then or, or, or a blog post. You should look it up sometime. Where <coughs> in healthcare he predicted that 80 percent of uh, what a doctor does would be able to be done by a virtual assistant. Okay. Now, most people misunderstood what he wrote. He's a friend of mine, by the way, and, and I talked to him about it. Most people misunderstood and said he thought that 80% of the doctors would go away and we would have one doctor doing much more. What's happened instead is that doctors all around the world are being inundated with medical information, health information, and the like. And more and more they're spending time doing that as well as emailing back and forth as well as um, uh, understanding more about what the, uh, the patient problem is. They're spending less time with the patient and more time, I don't know what it's like here in Bulgaria, but more times looking at the screen, writing down information and getting information. So I would bring that as a major, whenever you see an industry that is old or antiquated, that has old patterns where you can disrupt it by offering new, f less friction and much more efficiency, you go for that industry. So definitely in the United States, the health industry is ready for disruption, okay? No doubt about it. Doctors need help. They're cr I work with the American Medical Association. There's 250,000 doctors in their, um, in their uh, membership. And I work with a company called Health 2047 to disrupt, to help create revolutions and transformation in healthcare. I believe that healthcare will be transformed where we will be able to keep people healthier, happy, and, and more successful, and, even, and not just wait till they're sick, but keep them healthy. Last point about that. A good example of an AI application is Omada Health. I don't know you know the company called Omada Health. Omada Health is a company for people who have pre-diabetes or diabetes, diabetes type 2 or pre-diabetes. Managing their diabetes is a complicated thing. And this Omada Health offers an AI as well as non-AI you know, process for helping people manage their disease. And that will be a personal assistant that, that helps them do that. So that's one major area. Uh, other major areas that are open for disruption, uh, clearly um, e-commerce is still going to be a major area where people have yet to make a difference. Amazon is wonderful around the world, but the ability to have uh, a chatbot, a virtual assistant, or image recognition or the like to help people uh, recognize what they want to buy and understand what they're doing, that's another area. So I could, I mean, literally every in finance industry is going to be disrupted. All these, all these industries, um, you have an opportunity. And I don't mean Silicon Valley. I mean you here. And I mean companies. The second last point about that is companies are international these days. You don't have to move to Silicon Valley to be part of a breakthrough company. I mean, I've worked with, I've created companies that had offices in Israel, England, and so forth. Sorry for the long answer. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my name is Christo. Yes. First of all, thank you for coming thank to you. Sofia um, and uh, you know, spending the time with us to answer our questions. So my question is specific to, let's say, natural language understanding yeah. or computer vision or any of the new trends that right. are coming. My question is for the big companies like Microsoft, Google, and all the companies right. that are investing a huge amount of money, how much in those companies is actually, how much are they doing real scientific work or, and how much they are stepping on some things that are coming out from MIT and Stanford and those universities? So, for example, why I'm asking, when you think about Siri, uh, it is great that, you know, Siri was announced, but let's say in six months, Microsoft also announced yes. uh, a, a new, uh, you know. It's true. And, and you're thinking about how much is it based on really some breakthrough that's happening in, in a company that is hard to copy and how much it, it is just an application of something that already exists as a science. So my question is really how much they do in terms of a science 
and how much they're relying on, on those things being... So, for a while, AI was a science where great research labs were working together to create it. And SRI led a $150 million program from the government called DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Program, for KLO, where we led 23 co uh, companies to, uh, to create um, a virtual personal assistant. It was called KLO, the program, Cognitive Assistant that Learns and Organizes. So in the beginning, breakthrough research has to be done at great areas. doesn't have to be, but often is. Someone asked me at one of the other talks I gave recently, could a, a few folks in a garage do it today? And the answer is, I think so. Yeah. And the reason is, is that Google and all the others are opening up um, open source algorithms. Uh, NVIDIA is coming out with chips. Um, everyone is, it's now becoming an opportunity everywhere for people to make a difference in AI and to take advantage, to stand on the shoulders of what's happened. So would I say, does, does Google have you know, great opportunity? Okay, if you need to have a thousand servers or a million servers in a cloud service, you're gonna have trouble competing. But if you have a great idea in a narrow market vertical with a real pain point, and can invent a technology breakthrough solution with a great user experience that surprises and delights people, you have a great chance. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Five minutes, okay, yeah. I'm very quick because you almost answered my question. Okay. I work with text analysis of clinical narratives. Yes. And I wanted to ask you, you said the health system in America is ready for disruption. Yes. Not in Europe, not in Europe. My question was how the technologies could change the legislation, the organization. I didn't understand. Say how technology can change the legislation, the organization of healthcare in the United States or no, in, in Europe. So yeah. you say that in in United States this happens. No, it didn't happen. I mean, the, it's ready for disruption in the United it's States. Ready. Healthcare in the United States is terrible. I mean, I mean, what sh I'm, let me say it differently. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> you can have great health care in the United States, wonderful health care, but it's ex but it's fractured. It's it's the the infrastructure is what's bad. So um, electronic health records are not shared across hospitals very much. Uh, doctors are not able to transport um, medical information from one person Hospital to another. Yeah. Patients don't really uh, have access. Hi what's called HIPAA laws provide security, so much so that, pa that people can't collaborate on offering a solution. So I definitely think that there's huge opportunity for success in creating new companies there and breaking through these barriers. But changing the law, that's a very, very, very different talent and not something uh, I've tried. But, but uh, let me tell you one last thing. The United States medical system is going from a, uh, a system of pay per uh, treatment to pay per value. So right now, everybody get, uh, every doctor in hospital gets rewarded for each treatment they, they propose. In the future, the uh, insurers are going to only pay or pay according to how well the treatment worked. And so it will be, this is for you folks, if you want to create another breakthrough, understand how you manage and track the value of a treatment so that the payers can use that value. That's one, one great breakthrough. In other words, AI has to do that because nobody's gonna track all these things as a human. Uh, another great breakthrough is going to be um, doctors can work on, hopefully, with 10 patients instead of one and give the same quality service because of the virtual assistant. But they're not paid that way right now. So the payers in the future will pay them according to the value they create, whether it's been through an intelligent, artificial intelligence system or through the doctor himself. Thank you. Thank you. How many questions do we have? Where's our... Sweet enough.
Joy. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you again for the presentation. It yeah. was really interesting. And uh, I have two uh, kind of more technical uh, related questions. Uh, and uh, they're mainly related to the fact that you're in the Silicon Valley and around all these right. uh, research institutes and etc. Yeah. So I was just wondering if you get uh, can tell us some insights. So the first question is, uh, if you look at the chatbot scene, uh, so there is uh, an approach where you can manually automate, uh, create the script of a conversation. Right. You can engineer the whole flow and yep. etc. So that's one way to do it. Now with deep learning, the the more interesting part is, for, at least for uh, in my perspective, is uh, the ability to actually. Uh, use, uh, let's say, deep learning net network on a big database right. and automatically be able to build this rich uh, kind of uh, scripts yeah. where uh, the ma machine would automatically uh, learn how to behave uh, effectively as a person. Now, this probably would not work as a, in the general domain uh, where you ask a computer anything and they are able to respond you meaningfully like an AGI. But I, I think it might be possible to do it in a, uh, as you said, small vertical, like yeah. say banking or uh, yeah. healthcare, etc. So I was just wondering if you have stumbled on anything interesting happening in that area. So I'm sure that there is. And your answer is exactly right. I have no, um, I, I have no confidence in a script approach. Okay. Okay. So whenever you try and script conversation, you assume that conversation will follow the script. When's the last time our conversation followed a script? Yeah. So I think that uh, in order to enable a conversational chatbot that really works, you keep a narrow vertical. You can always extend into new verticals and broaden in the future, but you create a breakthrough area within the narrow vertical, just like we tried initially with Siri, with travel and entertainment. I didn't finish that sentence with, uh, uh, about Siri. When Siri went beyond travel and entertainment, when Apple did that, a lot of people complained. This is not working. This is not, you know, where do I bury a body? Didn't tell me, you know. <laughs> so, um, so that's, you're exactly right. And I do think that whether it's deep learning or some other way to analyze the, um, the way people converse and use that as part of the data too is going to be the future breakthroughs. And I'm sure you'll have a chance to do it. Pick the right vertical. Make sure you have a great pain point. Have a breakthrough technology solution. Have a great team and tell a great story and you will be a great success yeah and uh, if i can ask the second question hey. it's uh, okay. Siri, uh okay. tell my team i'm late for dinner yeah 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 <laughs> i'll ask them later sorry george about this yeah, one yeah. yeah okay thank uh, you so much norman needs to catch dinner uh, just uh, just in a little bit uh and yeah norman thank you so much for uh asking some questions and sharing some light here uh, we really appreciate it thank you for having and me yeah. and i'm sure yeah. Yeah. How many of you want to be entrepreneurs? Raise your hand, please. Everybody give them a hand and encourage them. Let's all applaud for them. Thank you. Thank you.